was showing almost identical reading. This is actually a little bit higher HFE. It's a little over the meter. I would say that's probably 105. And for our leakage, this is about three as opposed to two. So far, very, very good. Very good. I'm, I'm impressed. These are the these are the best germaniums I've ever gotten. Working with germanium is more involved, but there's a greater reward. Well, hello again, YouTube. It's PD Two Finger, and this is a Muller 950 germanium transistor, also known as an OC140. This is an optimal transistor because the Muller 950 has a great reputation for having a real minute level of leakage, which is not good. It also has an appropriate amount of oomph, HFE, or gain is how we. When we test a transistor for its gain, they call it HFE. And this is important. These circuits such as the vintage fuzz face that Jimi Hendrix used or the Range Master treble booster that Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Rory Gallagher, Richie Blackmore, when built properly using a proper germanium transistor can provide sonic enhancement to your guitars and amplifiers tone that is unrivaled. Simply put, it's one of the best guitar effects I've ever played through and I've played through a lot of them and recently I've just simply become enamored with the Range Master thing. That's what I really like. When they first started making these transistors in the early 50s, they weren't aware of silicon as an element to use in electronics. It didn't exist. So they were using germanium. A couple of issues stem from the physical characteristics of this element. Most of the germanium transistors are what they call PNP, which is a reverse polarity, meaning you cannot daisy chain your effect power supply because this is flip-flop from a boss standard. So some guys will say, well, Let's just run a nine volt battery in the germanium fuzz box because it doesn't draw a lot of current. The battery will last a real long time and that will honestly solve your problem and that's fantastic. Other guys don't like messing around with nine volt batteries. They will build an additional small circuit called a voltage inverter to physically flip the polarity of the voltage inside the pedal and that's really brilliant. There's another issue which is heat. If you're playing outdoors and the temperature gets up into the upper 70s, 80 degrees, you may very well have your germanium box crap out on you. Now, there is a solution. Guys talk about, Josh from JHS will talk about taking a 1N34A germanium diode and connecting that in between the collector and the emitter Basically what it does is because they both do the same thing, if you flip flop the, the one and put it in there reverse, they will both do the same thing, but it will provide an opposite result and balance itself out is the simplest way I could explain that to you. So working with germanium is more involved, but there's a greater reward because there is a magical tone thing that happens. But they say germanium transistors are like snowflakes. Not all, every single one has its own unique sound characteristic. And they all have their own individual gain level or oomph. This is measured in what we call HFE and also their leakage. This will leak current and now there isn't a puddle underneath it, but your, your sound gets bad. It, when you purchase these, you need to test the germanium transistor for two things, leakage and gain. 
and if you have a, if you get lucky, <laughs> you're having a good day, you'll end up with a transistor that both falls into the proper range of gain required to mimic what they used when they initially made the fuzz face or the range master. And then you need to have to make sure that it's not a leaker. So out there in the universe, there are uh, trillions of silicon transistors. There's not many germaniums left. They don't make them anymore. They stopped making them in the mid fifties. And guitar players have known about this and they've been going through warehouses and parts bins and scraping up the germaniums and building parts with them. JHS did a, a line of range masters. They could only build 700. So my experience has shown me that it's it's a commitment if you're going to go with the germanium active in your device. It's a lot easier like for the range master you can get a silicon a low HFD switching transistor uh, 2N2369A and they're not cheap so here I am paying extra a significant amount extra to get this part that's silicon it's NPN when the original range master was PNP and it was germanium so it's like at that point the only stipulation would be the temperature. So why would you want to build a, a silicon NPN range master if you're going to have to pay extra for the transistor? Just get the germanium one. If, you, if you're playing outdoors in the heat, there's things you can do. You can try the 1N34A in between the emitter and the collector. You could, there's, there have been guys that keep the they, were, they put the, the pedal in a plastic bag and put it in a cooler full of ice. And then when it's time to play, they pull it out of the cooler. So today's video is part of a series of videos where I am going to be testing these transistors. Also recommending Peter. Peter is from Lasnia Tucson. His name is Peter and he has an eBay store which is called X Ripley. And that link for his eBay store is going to be in the description. I received these Muller transistors from him. We're going to be testing them. I'm going to build a stock range master. We're going to build a, oop, not supposed to touch them. The heat transfers to it and makes the testing not as stable. We're going to be building a stock range master. We're going to be building a modified range master and and then something called the differential audio manifestations red rooster, which is a modernized, it's a modified range master. So three range masters are going to be built out of this. I'm going to be doing a demo so you can hear what when I get one of these done, I'm definitely going to be doing a demo video for you guys. The point of today's video is to, again, to stress to you how important it is to have a guy, to have a reputable supplier, because the germaniums that are out there that exist, if you buy from a guy who you don't know, there's a chance that they're going to cherry pick them. They're going to pull up. They're going to test them. They've got these test rigs like I have here. You can build your own test rig. As a matter of fact, this is kind of a, a little bit overkill. I have a little rig that I built that I use for PNP germaniums, where you pop the transistor in the socket, you connect your multimeter, you wait till the number stabilizes. It's got a nine volt power supply you plug in. You flip a switch, you get these two readings off the meter, you do a little bit of math, and that's gonna give you your HFE and your leakage. And that's the RG Keen method, which these are reverse polarity, and 
I have this Heathkit tester, which is really nice. It's just that it's, it's built in a time when the transistors didn't have a real lot of gain. And it looks like the meter only goes up to 200. 250 maybe? Yeah. It looks like it only goes up to 250 HFE. So the point of this video is again to explain this really complicated situation involving using germanium transistors and how your life can be made infinitely easier whereas you won't even need to do a test. If you have a reputable supplier, if you if you reach out to Peter, you tell him, hey, look at I'm building a range master. Could you cherry pick me a couple, make sure that they're they're not leakage, they're not leakers, and they've got the right HFE. I, I'm looking to get them around 80 or 100. And there you go. So that being said, we are going to take a look at this. There's a red dot. The red dot signifies the collector and set calibrate our beta for 10x here and okay so this reading here is our gain. This is right around 100 HFE. And now we're going to do ICBO, which is our leakage. We're seeing our leakage is like just above the zero. And it comes up to about three on the ICEO. We're at about two and a half. So this is a our first Our first test has shown us that this is a, around 100 HFE and it's leaking at about uh, 2.5. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's barely, barely leaking. Okay, so GM0, range is one ma, and we hit our power, and I'm going to set my beta to infinity, and beta cal calibrate to 10x. Again, we're showing almost identical reading. This is actually a little bit higher HFE. It's a little over the meter. I would say that's probably 105. And for our leakage, this is about three as opposed to two. So far, very, very good, very good. I'm, I'm impressed. These are the, these are the best germaniums I've ever gotten. And I, I heard that about the Muller 950. I heard the, that, like the um, OC 140, um, OC 44 is another really good germanium transistor. Okay. Uh, GM equals zero. Calibrate the left side of the meter.
Elevate the right side of the meter and this is slightly lesser again, which is not bad. I mean, I, honestly, the you're looking for, some people say 80, 85 is ideal. And as far as leakage goes, This is exactly like the second transistor um, as far as the leakage goes. So, if you do not have a Heathkit <laughs> IT121, you can build your own um, on a breadboard. It's like two resistors, a toggle switch, a nine volt, power supply or battery and a multimeter and some alligator clips and you can I, I built mine on uh, bits of scrap wood and I used a it's got a power plug on it where you can plug in anything from like 11 to 18 volt power supply adapter and then it's got a voltage regulator that converts whatever power comes in and gives it just 9.00 volts. And there's a little readout on it that shows you what your voltage is reading. And there is transistor sockets on it and then little wires that come out with alligator clips where you plug your meter in on it. And there's some math that you do, 2.472. You divide the number by that. And that, that'll give you this, basically the same results. If you do different methods of testing, you'll get slightly different results, but they're all relative, you know? And I would say, judging from what I had heard, what I had uh, come to know to be fact about the OC140 or Muller 950, I knew these were gonna be really good transistors, unless by some freak, uh, Unless this guy was not a trusted seller. And Peter, also known as X Ripley, is a guy who's selling legitimate, excellent germanium components. So if that's what you're interested in doing, now you know where to go. You can let him know. P2 Finger is the guy that got the, uh, the word out for me. And I would appreciate that makes me look like a good guy. I And again, I'm not a pro tech or an expert. I learned about this stuff just from going into forums and reading, you know, standing on the shoulders of other people's work. Uh, so hats off to all those people. RG Keen, there's a guy named Pink Jimmy Photon. Jimmy Photon is a guy who I have asked him anytime I have a question, I'll ask him and he's always got some really interesting responses for me. And he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to germanium. Um, we don't see eye to eye on music or much, much, we, we're completely different types of people. Uh, but when it comes to this stuff, there really isn't a lot of leeway, you know? There's, there's really one good way to do it, which is, Get the right HFE. See, like, you'll see guys on the forum and they're they're talking about modifying their range master of the input capacitor. And I think what's going on is they don't have a supplier. They, they see these actives. They see, oh, here's some germaniums on eBay. Well, what if the guy's going to send me bad ones? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them all this money. I'm going to wait. It's going to come. I'm going to have to build a test rig, put it together, and then find out it's they, they've been cherry-picked. I mean, it happened to me. I bought a bag of 100 Russian germanium transistors, and they, they were nowhere near what they were supposed to be. They were listed as 60 to 130 in the auction, I believe it was, and they were all in the 50s. There was two that were like, I got a 60 and a 63. HFE. So they were, and they were all leakers. So they had been, clearly had been cherry picked. And when you pay the money, you wait, 
an incredible amount of time. In this case, this guy didn't, it didn't take a real long time for him to ship this to me. But in the other case, I waited a real long time and then I had to go through the process of testing them, which took a real long time. And it, I was really bummed out. I was really, really frustrated. And they argued they didn't want to get, they didn't want to pay the auction. They tried denying it. Uh, uh, fortunately, eBay sided with me, but that was a really unfortunate experience. So when you've been around and you've been burned, you'll really understand when I say it's important to have yourself a reputable supplier to obtain germanium transistors, I mean it. So special thanks to X Ripley and all the best wishes to his eBay store. You can head over there because the link is in the description. Pick up some, pick up some parts and build yourself a Range Master. I gotta tell you guys, I absolutely love this circuit. It's magic. And getting back to my point, when I go on the forums, I see all these people doing mods to the input capacitor. And I think this goes back to the fact that rather than trust, put their trust in somebody or watch a video and get a, a recommendation like through me here, they go, I'm just gonna compromise and I'm gonna build a silicon transistor range master. Well, Modern silicon transistors are like 8 to 20 times more powerful, the HFE or the gain. So you have the circuit, it's supposed to just bump up your treble and maybe as a result some of the mids and bass get reduced, which is really a good thing for pleasant, non-muddy distortion. It's great for the British, uh, their amps are darker, the Fender amps were brighter. That's why the, all the British guys were using treble boosters. So you have the circuit that's designed to bump up your treble to give you this like tilt. Only when people are building it in, in 2024, they can't get that low HFE transistor that's just 100. They, they're putting an 800 transistor in it. So it's getting it's getting just cranked up and you end up with a pedal that's putting out way too much treble and no bass. You're, you got an ice pick box. So then guys will, they'll modify, they'll go give you a bigger capacitor to let the more bass through. And then what do you have? Well, you've got a clean boost. You don't have a range master anymore. You have a silicon clean boost, which is great, and they they do they they work, and you may you may very well like that. If you're looking for a more uh, rounded treble booster, the Greg Fryer one with the BC239. But again, it, it's an it's a specialty active. You're going to have to hunt down that transistor, and if you're going to have to you're going to have to pay extra and hunt down a, uh, an active for your circuit, why not go with what it was made with originally? Get the authentic thing, which that's what this is. It may not be the same part number, but it behaves identically. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this one. Uh, I apologize for the amount of blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's a very complicated topic for me. And if you have any questions, I'd be free to do the best I can, but I would encourage you to just reach out to Peter, to X Ripley on his eBay auction page with the link is in the description. You guys stay cool, hug your pets and peace.